Jen Davis. Hi, Jen Hen. How are you? I'm well, how are you? Good, thank you. I always see you out on your walks in the morning during the nine o'clock. You're, you're in, that's inspiring. <laughs> Look, I'm in the TV. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> oh. So are we setting up the Kelly app today? No, today you're setting up your buyer and seller guides in your mobile app. Oh. Well, why? Okay. Good morning, Amy and Alice. Who else have we got here? We got Jody, we got Lydia, we got Steven, Emiliano. Yay! Oh. So, um, I will say that uh, in the morning's email, a handout went out to you guys, and it would probably be a little bit helpful to you if you had that document open. Oh, Don't great. Have it could be a little bit uh, okay. for you to follow along if you had that. Well, let me turn on the TV for you. Okay. And um, also, uh, we're going to have a couple of uh, we're going to have a couple of browsers open as well. So you're going to need to log into Command. Where the hell was it this morning? And I'm going to mute everybody. And if you need to talk, then you can unmute your. <laughs> All right, there we go. So you are going to need to log into command. I'm going to share my screen for just a moment. Did, well, before I do that, did everybody receive the handout for this class? It's two documents. You did receive those. Yay. Thank goodness. Yes, thank you. Fantastic. It was challenging last week that I was teaching the class and the staff forgot to send out the handout. <laughs> um, so it's a lot easier when you have that in, in place. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen because I wanna show you the, the, the places where you need to have open as well, okay? So you need to have your command uh, browser, you need to have a browser open with command, okay? Um, I, I don't have a problem working, um, you know, uh, not incognito, but if you've had a challenge with that and you want to log in through Cognito, that's fine. If you don't know how to do that, these three buttons up here um, uh, to the right of the browser window, that is where you would open up a new incognito window. It's also, by the way, where you can change the appearance of your screen. Do you see right here where it says Zoom? And you can, and I'm at 90. If I go to 100, see how it makes my screen bigger? The reason I point that out is because where I'm going to need you to go in command is down here at the bottom, um, which is the consumer spot. You may not see that down here on the bottom. If you don't, then you need to come up here to these three dots. You need to make your screen a little bit smaller. So that you can see that widget down here at the bottom. Hey Jen, hey, yeah. hey Jen, that yeah. box, that box to the right of that, uh, that, where you were just adjusting the size of your screen. Yep. You see the box. If you click on that, it automatically goes to fit your screen size. Oh, look at that! Brilliant. Okay, so we you want to make sure that you're going to be able to see this consumer widget down here at the bottom. Now that actually uh, is that for me now that I just did that. It made it too made it too big. Made it too big. Yeah, not only that, but um, can I hit escape? Uh oh. For me, this is a problem because I need to be able to move around on my screen. Crap. Sorry, Jen. Uh, just to hit escape. Yeah, not working. Oh. oh crap. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Small little panic attack as the uh, organizer of Sorry. class. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Can you go right. through those so, steps again, please? Pardon? Can you go through those steps again, please? You Wait, just need to log into commands. That's all we've done so far. 
All right, no, how you shrunk the screen to get to the bottom. Yes, uh, up to the, and you can use this for any, any time you need to in your computer. To the right of your browser, I'm circling where we are right now. The browser is up here at the top, this browser window. All the way to the right are these three dots. Those three dots allow you to shrink the screen down. Okay. You need to just be able to see this consumer widget at the bottom of command. Can okay. everybody see that consumer widget at the bottom of command? Yes. Okay, yes. fantastic. All right. The other, the other spot that you need to have open on your computer is you need to actually have a Google window open. And so on my screen, you can see I'm here at Google and you need to go to Google images. Do you see how it says Gmail right here and images? You need Google images. Okay. So these are the two things that we're going to use command and Google images. All right. I'm going to stop the share. All right, make sure that everybody is in where they need to be. All right, does anybody need any more time to make sure they have those two windows open? Command and Google Images. All right, I'm gonna assume that we don't need anything more right. because no one's saying that they need more time. We're good? Great. I need a little, I need to. I'm sorry, who was that? That was Lydia. Need more time to open up command and Google images? Where did All you right. get Google images again? You just need to go to google.com. So right. share my, I'll share my screen again. Oh, where are you? Share my screen. You go to google.com. Right. And, then, and then you over on the right hand, so watch. Right, yep. Google.com. And then at the top right, you just click on images. Oh, images, okay, sorry. Okay, okay. that's all right. All right, everybody good? Oh wait, I don't have images. Everyone has Google images. You can even just type in Google images if you want. That should take you there. All right. All right. Now, now I want you to get your phone out. And, and let me just say this, this is a tech class. So please be patient with yourself and with your instructor. <laughs> Although I have done this many, many times and I'll try to be as, um, you know, I'll go as slowly as possible. This is not a difficult class, okay? All right, I want you guys to, um, open up your, your KW app. This is now, this, you see this one here? It's the white one with the red letters. Everyone can see that? Okay. I want you to open that. Now, this may take us a minute or two because it might be the case that a few people on the call have not customized their app to, to themselves yet. All right? So, um, if you open your app and you get a black screen that is asking you to log in, please unmute yourself and let me know that that's the case. No one has unmuted themselves. So that means everybody, um, when you log into your app, it takes you to this map, is that correct? Yes. Is there yeah. anyone that is, that is not the case? Is anyone getting a black screen asking you to log in? Yeah, unfortunately me. Who said that, Marvin? Yeah. Okay, it's not a problem, but you guys are not, if you have the black screen, don't <sighs> log in. It's, that's not what it wants you to do, okay? Yep. Yeah. Is Marvin the only one with the black screen asking you to log in? No, I have it too, Jen. Okay, oh, good. fantastic. So where are we, where are we now? We're logging into. I'm sorry, I, I'm not following where we are. Lydia, you're gonna have to follow along. I have it too. I don't know where you are. <laughs> okay. I gotta turn. I gotta you you need to open up your mobile app, okay? 
on your phone. It's the, it's the white app with the red letters, the KW, okay? Yeah. If your screen does not look like my screen and it's a black screen asking you to log in, yeah. okay? Then what you're gonna do, is there anyone else that has the black screen? <sighs> I'm just gonna wait a second to make sure that we have, this is very important, we have to get this right. I currently have the black screen, yes. All right, so anyone that has the black screen, black screen, please follow my instructions. Click the X in the right hand, upper right hand corner. Ooh, I did that myself. Okay, now let me explain something before you do anything else. This is, a, this is completely a consumer app. It thinks you're the consumer. When it asks you to log in, it's not talking about your back office. This is not your back office. Your back office to all of this is Kelly. That's the turquoise app, okay? So you are literally seeing this as if you're a consumer. It does not differentiate between you, Jen, the realtor, or you, Jen, the consumer, okay? So, so what you're gonna do is when you click the black, uh, the, the, the X, right? It's now going to take you to, uh, the, the, it should take you to the map screen, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. In the bottom right-hand corner, you're gonna click on the word you right there. All right? That's gonna take you to this screen. You wanna click on your agent and you're going to search for yourself. Search for your name. Now, if you've already done this, when you, when you uh, click on you at the bottom and you get this screen, do you see how under your agent it says my name? It should say your name there. If it doesn't say your name, then you haven't searched for you. So you need to make sure that you search for you. And then you're going to select you as your agent and hit confirm. You might have to press get in touch first and then confirm. Yeah, get, it, yeah, get, yeah, get in touch and then hit confirm. Oh, I got you. Okay. That's All right. Good. Now, it's, now, is everybody following along? Everybody's good? Okay. Yes. So far, so good. Okay. Now it's going to ask you to log in. It doesn't want you to log in to MyKW. It wants you to log in as if you're a consumer. So you're now setting up a, a consumer account. So you're gonna, you're gonna sign up, not log in. You're gonna sign up oh. and you're gonna you, pardon? Yes. Okay, so you're gonna sign up. Just use your, you can use your regular email address and, and create a password for yourself. Just create a password that you're gonna remember because, um, <laughs> As much as I love all you guys, I won't remember your passwords. <laughs> okay. All right. So then once you do that, you should be all set. And now when you click on the bottom screen and it says you, your agent should have your picture and your name there, just like mine does. See? Yay. Isn't that awesome? Now, um, I want you to click on the U in the bottom right hand corner. And then below where it says your agent, I want you to click on share the KW app. This is how you share the app with anybody that you're host that you're that you meet in an open house or anywhere. Now it's branded to you, and now when you share it, it captures their information. Does that make sense? Yes. Fantastic. Wait. All right, is everybody good? No. Who said that? Denise Ash, I'm trying to set up me, um, the sign up part of it and it's taking me a minute. Okay, as long as you're clicking sign up and not, uh, not sign mm -hmm. in, you should be fine. Okay, now, while we're waiting for Denise to do that, I want you to notice on the bottom of your app, do you see where it says in the very middle, it says, oops, I'm sorry, I turned my phone off. I need to do that. In the very middle of the bottom, it says guide. See right there? Guide. 
guy. Click on that, right? What? And that's going to take you to what we're creating today. Guide. Hold on. Uh oh. Guide. It's at the bottom of the screen, the bottom of the app. The bottom of your app says search, feed, guide, saved, and you. Okay, I'm good now. Thanks. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, guide. I'm sorry. That's okay. All right. So notice you have buying guides and then you have selling guides. Okay. And these are, these are all of the steps that a person would go through when they're working with you. Okay. Now, there are already some steps there. However, uh, with the coaching group, I have helped them really flesh out uh, a bunch more steps because we have processes. I mean, this is designed on a national level, okay? You could just leave this as it is. However, most of us have a lot more steps than what you're just seeing here, okay? You notice how, um, over to the left of each one of those steps, um, there's like a little circle, right? Yep. And so what, what's ha the purpose for this is if a, if a person you're working with, and by the way, customers that you are working with, you wanna share your app with them immediately while you're working with them. Because it's a means, it's a platform for you guys to talk back and forth with each other. And this guide is their step-by-step, -step, where are we in this process and what's happening next, which you can also control from command on the back end, which we're gonna get to in a moment, okay? I first want you to understand what the purpose of this thing is, okay? All right, so if you guys look and see, you already have a couple of steps in your guide. We're gonna create even more steps and make it really amazing, all right? Now I have the handout that you got has all of the steps that, um, as an instructor, I feel are important for us. Uh, you may have some different steps, uh, you know, as part of your process of your business, but I'm gonna teach you how to set those up, okay? So what will happen is, as you're going through the opportunities in um, command, and uh, yeah, through the opportunities, you can then, your, your clients will see what, what phase they're in of the process through the app. Does that make sense? Jen? Yes. Jen? Yes. Where is the handout? Was it emailed? It was. Oh. It came from Adonis. Or it came oh, from Maria this morning when in the morning email. Yeah, I see okay. it. It's under Adonis. Thank you. All right. So we're re everyone ready to move on to the next step? Yeah, one minute. Everyone has seen their guides and now we're gonna flesh those out, okay? I'm gonna share my screen again. And now I want you to be in command. You'll see on my screen here, I'm sharing, I'm, I, I've got the command app open, the command program open, all right? And we're gonna click at the very bottom here where it says consumer. You joined me late and you don't see consumer as a widget here on the bottom. You need to come to the upper right hand corner of your screen where those three dots are and you need to make your screen a little smaller in order for it to show up. All right, hold on. Where are you? Consumer on the bottom and that's going to take us to where we need to go. Consumer on the bottom. You're in command, Marvin. Oh, if you guys get lost, just remember to look up at my screen because I'm taking you where you need to go. Okay. Uh, all right. Get, get out of this. Hold on. All right. Okay. Everybody, everybody good. It seems to be taking a minute to load. Here we go. All right. When you end up on the consumer part of command, there are three sections. Your screen may not look like mine. You may not have created any landing pages yet. That's okay. But you have landing pages as a section of consumer. You have agent site pages as a section of consumer and you have guide builder. We're going to click on guide builder. All right.
and that's going to take you to this page. All right. Is everybody in the same spot that I'm in now? I have muted you, so if you need to answer, if you're not where I am, then answer. If you are where, you, where I am, then we'll move ahead. Okay, again, your screen's gonna look a little bit different than mine because I've already created all the additional steps. Yours might only say five steps, okay? Uh, yours might, I think in the, uh, the seller guide, yours might only say nine or seven. I don't remember what the number was, okay? The handout that I gave to you is all of the verbiage that we're gonna use to create these. So we're gonna start with the buyer guide. So over here on the far right, you're gonna click the pencil and it's gonna take you to this editor. All right. Now, in my world, uh, the way I run my business and the way that I coach all of my uh, agents is the very first thing you do when you meet a new client is you have them in for the buyer consultation. That may not be your first step. If it's not your first step though, I would question you as to why it's not your first step because that meeting is the most important meeting. That is your lead conversion tool, okay? So we've created a step for that. Before we go through, before we create the new steps, I'm just gonna show you all the different ones that we've created here uh, for you to utilize. So step one, when you meet a new person is meet for the buyer consultation. And then I, I, I say why. This is an incredibly informative meeting to review the steps of the buying process as well as your needs and desires. Two, get pre-approved. Um, I think in the, the way the app was prior to having the buyer consultation and get pre-approved, I think it was you just go look at houses. Well, I don't know about any of you guys. I did that in the beginning of my career. I would just go out and show people houses and that ended up in a lot of wasted time and not the money to match was not there. <laughs> I've spent way more time than money that came in doing that process. So step number two is get pre-approved. Why should you get pre-approved? Simple, to determine what you can comfortably afford. It also allows us to move quickly when we find the right house. When presenting an offer, the pre-approval will be required for submission. Now, the pre-approval was a step that was already there, but noticed I added some verbiage to that. All right, the next step is start your search. To find your perfect home, let's identify the neighborhoods you wanna live in, save your favorites, and then add them to a collection where we can comment and collaborate. When they add um, their favorites to a collection in the app, which is what you're gonna teach them to use, they're not only gonna see these different steps, but you will see what their collection is and you can talk back and forth between each other on the app about the homes that they've saved. All right, so once they start their search, then you're gonna to go tour some homes. Then when you find one, you're gonna make an offer. Then you're gonna do an inspection. Then you're gonna execute the contract. Then an appraisal will happen. Then they need to order their home insurance and a home warranty if they feel that, that you know, that's necessary. Then you're gonna do the final walkthrough and then you're gonna go to the closing. Now notice at the very bottom here, this is where you add a step, all right? So the first thing you guys are gonna do is you're gonna click add a step and that's gonna let you create the steps. So if you're following along, with the handout that I gave you, and you like the idea of doing the buyer consultation, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add the card title, which is meet for buyer consultation. All right. And even if you do this virtually, which um, in the coaching call this morning that we had, Silva did her first Zoom consultation with clients she'd never met before. And, um, uh, she, she's, I'm not sure if she's on this call or not, but she said it went incredibly well. So she did the buyer consultation, but she did it via Zoom. Yes, I did. Thank you. Um, all right. So I have the, the verbiage for this card subtitle there for you in the handout. So that's where you would type. This is an incredibly, oh, I spelled that wrong. 
informative meeting to review the steps of the buying process, as well as your needs and desires. I mean, how can you really find them a house if you don't really know what their needs are and, and also what's important to them and how the dynamic between the two of them is as a couple? All the things that you learn by sitting down with them at that conference table is the most valuable information you can have in order to make this process less painful and faster. I don't know about you guys, but when I get a new client, I, I want to be in an offer with them you know, in a couple of weeks. I don't want it to be a, you know, a four month process. That sounds horrible. Okay. Hey, so now, before, yes. Hey, Jen, it's Gloria. Um, I, earlier this morning, I actually built all these steps already and I'm in command. I'm watching this and I have all those steps, but when I open up my app, it's not translating to it. The consumer. Well, yeah. Here's what happened. So there's this small, there's this little important thing at the very, very top here that says save changes. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't hit save changes, it didn't save anything. It did because I'm in command and I'm looking at all the steps I put in that were all your steps from the sheet, but it's still not in my app, which is weird. I have the same problem. Um, so that is very strange. Unless for some reason, when you look, when you click on you at the bottom of your app. Yeah. Um, did it, does it say under your agent is your name and your face there? Yeah, it is. And then all my info, phone number, I mean, everything. And you just did that this morning? I did with you this morning, yeah. Okay, so it may take a couple of minutes for it to update. Also, did you add images? I added images, yes, for each step. Okay, yeah, because you have to add images, otherwise it won't let you save. Do you see how it's already giving me an error there? Yeah, I, I have that for every one of them. Yeah. So I, th I think Gloria and for whoever else that was that chimed in that already did this this morning, I love you people that are just, you know, <laughs> zoom right ahead, fantastic. <laughs> I did um, mine um, a month or so ago and it saved, it looked great. It's just that I never had the app part of it that you just showed me where I added myself. But now that I've done that and I look at my steps that I did before, it's not matching. Okay. Okay. So it's probably just going to take a little while for it to update, but it, do it, does, it does work, I assure you. Okay. Okay. So now what you're going to do is, so now notice you have this, um, uh, you, you have this here. Okay. You have to pick an image. So this is why I wanted you to have Google images open. So notice how I'm just going to toggle over. Okay. And you can just, and you can just type in anything. So we'll just put, um, client, um, consultation. All right. And you're gonna get 9 million different images. Now, a word about images, okay? Some of these are images that are not free to use. Uh, so you might have to search around a little bit. Uh, let's see, we obviously don't want a nail salon image. This one might be a, a, a decent one because this, this looks like it might be an agent or this is a good one. So you're going to click on that image, right? As long as there's no watermark there and there's, it doesn't look like it's branded to anyone in particular, then you're just going to right click on the image. You're going to save the image as, you can just save it to your desktop or create a folder if you want to. This one is a Shutterstock image, so it may not let me, it may not let me save this. We'll just put um, buyer consult, save. You'll know when it is. it's got a watermark on it and you're not even gonna be able to use it. So now I'm gonna open this up at the bottom of my screen and see if I can use this or not. Looks good. I'm gonna now toggle back over to the guide builder, search my computer, Now, important point. Notice how if you look on your, your app um, guides on your phone, on your, on your guide, it doesn't give you the whole photograph, okay? It only gives you a portion of the photograph. So when you're selecting pictures, you might wanna keep that in mind um, because you might not have, 
you, you might choose something that it cuts it off. Like, let's say that, let's say the people were further down here, then you would only have this, this, the top of their heads. So that might not work. So I'm going to hit continue. Okay, so notice here at the top, it said, congratulations, you created a new step. Anytime you create a new step, it's at the very bottom. See, there it is. You see how it cut their heads off there, but I don't care. That's, it's still a fine enough image. Now, for the purpose of this class, okay, and to keep everybody sane, um, I'm not, we're, we're not gonna spend time having you choose the correct image for each one of these because we have a lot of them to create. So if you'll just save one image and use the same image for everything, and then you can come back in after the class and then change the images to the ones you want. Is that a fair enough suggestion? Yes. Otherwise we'll be here all day and people will be saying, Jen, I can't find the right image, right? And how did you make the image fit the box? Well, I, I, just, I just mentioned that you can't make the image fit the box. Okay. So, you, so when you're making a choice, now I knew that their heads were gonna be cut off a little bit, but that's okay. It's, it's, the, the point of it is just, you know, the focus is not really so much the image. The image just goes along with the context of what this is about, right? So notice how in all of my images, like there's only a portion of the room, there's a portion of a neighborhood, portion of the appraisal, you see? You, yeah, I, I don't give it, you, you don't want to spend too much time worrying about that because you cannot get the whole image because of the way this is set up. Okay, got it. All right. Now, so, so we've just created step number one for the buyer consultation. In order to move it up to step number one, all you do is you come over here to the left side where the, the gray bars are. You have your little hand, just drag that up here like this until you get it to the spot you want. And you keep going. Voila. And then you put it in the first spot. Whoops, I didn't did that correctly. You get the idea, right? So you can just move it around like this until you get it to where you want it to be, okay? All right, so now you have step number one. Meet for the buyer consultation. Step number two, get pre-approved. And I think if I'm not mistaken, because now my screen is the, the new version that I, that I created, am I correct that get pre-approved was, was already a step, correct? Correct. Okay. So what you can do though, if you want to edit it, so for example, I added verbiage to that, which was, um, when presenting an offer, the pre-approval will be required for submission. That is the case in our area, correct? So if you want to make an adjustment, just click on it and it opens up the editor right here on the right hand side for you to make a change. Okay. So not only is, not only is this important um, for right now, if you're making a change, whoops, uh, but also, this is how you're going to be able to come back and change the images. All right. So here is the card title, get pre-approved. And this is where I added that additional verbiage. When presenting an offer, the pre-approval will be required for submission. I think in the handout that I gave you guys, if I'm not correct, I created that a long time ago. I think it does say in there um, that I added something. Correct? Isn't that what it says? Uh, no, it doesn't, Jen. It doesn't? No. It just says this already exists. Oh, okay. Well, I did, I did change that verbiage. All right. And now let's say, for example, let's say you decide you don't even want this step at all, right? So for me, for example, I just created a, a new step one, but I already had a step one. Click on this, and then I'll just hit remove step. Now that step that I just created is gone. All right, so after get pre-approved, you're going to start your search. Jen. Yes. 
once we um, make the change to the pre-approval step, how do we get it over to the pre-approval step? Um, save changes. Actually, you actually just hit save changes here at the top right. Okay. See? Yeah. Yep, got it. And, then, and then anytime you want to move something, the order, all you have to do is get move over to the gray boxes and then drag them to where you want them to be. See? Yep, got it. Okay. All right. So step number three was start your search. Um, what were some of the other, I don't have this document open. Oh, actually, yes, I do. Hold on a second. Uh, okay. So start your search already exists, tour homes already existed. Let's create one of the new ones. Um, one of the other new ones was appraisal. That was step number eight. All right, so we would come down to the bottom again and we would click on add a step. And you would type in appraisal. And then you would add the verbiage to that. What was the verbiage that I chose for that? Yeah, so around two weeks after accepted offer. I will meet the appraiser. Whoops. Oh, crap. Sorry, guys. Hey, Jen. Yes. I copy and paste from the Word document so I don't have to type. Even better. Yeah, so you, you guys get the general idea, correct? And you can, you can see... Um, you can see that having this is incredibly helpful because this says, I'm gonna meet the appraiser, your lender orders it, I'm gonna present them with comparable sales to make sure your appraisal comes in property, properly. There's no need for you to attend this one, I've got you covered, right? So this way they understand everything that's happening. That they don't need to worry about it or do anything, but they know that it's coming. Do you guys see how this, having all these steps there for them to follow along on the app is helpful to them and to you? Super helpful, are, thank you. Yeah, also if, if they are in an opportunity, if you've started an opportunity with them, you will be able to click these boxes um, from, the from command from the opportunity section so that they know what the next step is. And they'll be following along too and they'll say, oh, well, our next step is this. Oh, our next step is, is to get a home warranty. So instead of you having to say the same thing over and over and over again, you're gonna teach them at the buyer consultation how you guys are gonna be working together through the app, how it's gonna help them through this whole process, how they can save the properties that they like and collaborate with each other and with you, and, and all the different steps that happen. Now, you may have some of your own steps that you want to add to this process, and that's great. You know, there might be some, this happens to be the process that, that I do with my buyers. Uh, you may, I might be missing something. As a matter of fact, is, it, is there anybody on the call that wants to share something that they, in, that they want, that they are including that I didn't think of? You'd have to unmute yourself if you do. I added a uh, select an attorney. Select an attorney. Fantastic, Alice. All right, so if you were going to select an attorney, that probably is going to come somewhere right after make an offer, or maybe even before make an offer, right? Yes. So that would look like this. That's actually a great step, Alice. I think I'll add that. All right, so select attorney. What might be some good things you want to say here? Having an attorney is required in our area. Make sure they are licensed in Connecticut. Why would I say that? Because real estate law is different in Connecticut than other states. Law is different 
in every state. Yes, and if you have a New York attorney, is that gonna go well, typically? No. No. The other thing I added, I, I specified real estate attorney. Yeah. I, th I thought that was important. Um, having a real estate attorney, fantastic. What, yeah. Re oh, for goodness sakes, I can't type worth of beans. Uh, having a real estate attorney is required in our area. Make sure they are licensed in Connecticut. Real estate law is different in every state. All right, so. Uh, I having a real real estate attorney. Did I say, did I spell that wrong? Having, a, having, a, uh, a. Having, a, having a, having a, having a, not an, having a real estate attorney is required in our area. Make sure they are licensed in Connecticut. Real estate law is different in every state. So okay, I, I, and I also suggest uppercase R and uppercase E for real estate. Thank you. You may suggest that. Okay. And guess what? I'll actually accept that suggestion and I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, now I'm gonna look for an attorney just so I can go through these. Uh, actually, just look up this. real estate attorney and there is yep. a really great image of someone giving keys to the client. Ooh, look at so that. The upper left corner, the first one, it's brilliant. Here's one too, yeah. All right, so let's actually right click on this. This is so that you understand this process again. I'm gonna save the image as, and I'm going to call it attorney on my desktop so I can find it easily. Save, toggle back over to the guide builder, click open here, there's the attorney open and continue. Now, one piece of advice, every single time you add something, come back up here and hit save changes. The very first time I taught this, you know, the coaching agents will, will, <laughs> will uh, let you know that I went through the whole entire thing and forgot to hit save and I had to start all over again. <laughs> which just goes to show you, even if you've taught this a billion times, you can still make a mistake. All right, so I'm gonna move this up um, to right after make an offer. Up, oh, right there. Okay, select attorney, fantastic. Look at that, thank you for that suggestion, Alice. All right. My pleasure. Uh, um, okay. And, and so, I just found a, a really cool image for final walkthrough. So if you type final walkthrough, there is a really cool image there. All right. Thank you, Silva, for that suggestion. You're welcome. Okay, does everybody kind of get the, the basic idea of how to create this for the buyer guides? Uh, Jan, another one I added was finalized mortgage application. Well, you can, you can have that in here. I actually, um, I do a very extensive buyer consultation. So I have, you know, by, when I'm finished with that, they, I turn all that stuff over to the, whoever their lender is, but that's a good suggestion as well. So where did you put that Alice in your, 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 your lineup? Actually, I put it under, uh, after, um, execute contract. Execute contract. All right. So under execute contract, finalize your mortgage application. Yes. All right. Finalize mortgage application. So when I'm doing my, um, you guys can add this if you want to, but when I'm doing my consultation, um, and this is the only reason I did not put this as a step, I didn't tell them to select a mortgage person because I want to help guide that process. If they just happen upon my, uh, like if they found my, my app organically, um, because I, uh, you know, people are sharing it in my world, people are sharing it because I've been sharing my app for years now. 
um, if they see these guides and they go ahead and select a mortgage person, I might not be so thrilled with that selection when they end up in my office, right? So I didn't include that, but you may want to include that on your steps. I mean, that's the cool thing about this. It's your business and it's your process. So you can line this up however you would like. Um, so I would say for this one, speak to your lender to make sure all of your documents are in place for your application to proceed. All right. And now I would need some sort of image there. I'm just going to use the attorney image for now just so that I can keep going and then continue. And I can come back and fix that. Um, so you put that Alice under finalized contract, whoops, or before execute contract. All right, there we go. Fantastic, so we have some new steps now that we didn't even have on the, the sheet that I gave you. Is it really good for me to just toggle over to the sellers now, just so you can, so we can start that process as well? Make sure before you do anything, however, you go back up to the top and hit save changes. Just keep doing that all the time so that you don't have to redo this whole thing because it is a pain in the butt, I will tell you. Um, I'm just gonna show you the introduction. So when somebody receives your, uh, your app, it just explains to you, congratulations on starting the process of buying your home. This timeline will guide you through the steps required. I will be providing insights on each step. You don't need to follow it exactly, but I do recommend you consider each step, especially if you are a first time buyer. If you are, uh, I need to edit that. All right. Can I suggest something? You may. Okay, so when you add this uh, proceed with mortgage application, Mm -hmm. I, uh, and, and next to your sentence, speak to your lender that all the documents are in place. I added, make sure you do not experience any changes with your employment and that ratios prior to closing. Okay. Now you see Silva has learned valuable lessons because usually when we tell them things like that, it's because we learned it the hard way because we didn't mention that. How about that time that you had buyers and they needed to borrow money from their 401k and you didn't tell them in the very beginning to start working on that now. And you're now, you know, two days before signing contract and they are freaking out about signing contracts because they don't have the money from their 401k because they didn't begin that process. Guess whose fault that was? Yours. <laughs> Cause you didn't ask them in the beginning in that buyer consult, are you taking any money from a 401k? Okay, so I'm now going to come up here and I'm going to hit the back where it says up to up the top where I'm in the buyer's guide. I'm going to hit back. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to edit the seller guide. So click the pencil there. And now we start the process all over again with the seller guide. I think you guys pretty much um, understand the um, uh, the process on how to do this. I'll show you the, the steps that I added. Um, the first one was to view their home to see what improvements and condition uh, it's in and where the location is and what makes it unique. Then I'm gonna do the in-depth analysis on the pricing of your home as it relates to others that have recently sold and are currently for sale. Then we're gonna have a strategic meeting and notice I said, meet with you at my office to review analysis and determine the most strategic positioning of your home in the marketplace. At this point, we will sign the listing agreement and get your home sold. I'm telling them already, we're going to meet at my office because I have the control there as opposed to their house. This is an important meeting. It should be held at the office, not at their house. And I'm also telling them we're gonna sign the contract then so that when I pull that contract out and they know this already, are they gonna be weird about it? Hopefully not. Um, then we're gonna prepare their home. 
Staging may be required as well as other minor repairs or improvements to have your home show in its best light. Then we're gonna have photos, arrange to have photos taken. Then we're gonna have the sign installed. Lockbox will also be put on at this time. Then we're gonna develop the marketing materials for in-home display as well as online social media advertising. Then we're gonna schedule the broker and the public open houses. Then we're gonna begin showing your home. Once we've prepped your house for sale and we set a price, we're ready for the public to see your property. Then we're gonna review offers when we get them. When you receive one or more offers on your property, I can rank them based on your priorities and help you analyze, clarify, and compare your offers. All of which you can do through opportunities, by the way. Then there's gonna be an inspection. So I let them know most buyers request a home inspection as a condition of their offer. Here's what is and isn't covered in a home inspection, and how we can best prepare. Now, I don't list what's actually there. I have this as a, uh, a call to action. Now they're gonna call me and say, what is actually covered, Jen? I want to have a conversation about this. Appraisal comes next, you're nearly there. The next step is for the buyers to get an appraisal. You do need to change the verbiage on this because in some areas of the country, the seller pays for the appraisal. We don't have that in our area. So I did have to reword this. Um, let me explain the process and how a home appraisal impacts the sale of your home. Again, we've had this conversation during that strategic meeting because they need to understand just because they think it's worth a hundred, you know, a hundred thousand more than it actually is, doesn't mean they're going to get that. That's where this conversation comes into play again. And then of course you've got the close. Now you might have some other steps that you want to put in here. Um, which would be great. And if anybody wants like Alice's great suggestion, then Silva's suggestion, if anybody would like to make a suggestion of something that you think should be added or that you do that you'd like to share with the group, then that would be fantastic. Jen, go all the way, all the way to the top, please. Yep. The first step was to view your home. In my personal opinion, I mean, can I do an analysis having never seen a home? Yes, I can. Do I prefer to do it that way? No, I don't. I wanna go see the house and what's, what its condition is, that also gives me an opportunity to understand what their disc profile is, to really try to build that relationship, especially if I'm gonna be competing with someone else. If I have the opportunity to spend some time with you, chances are good that I can win the listing. Um, okay, any other questions about this process? I'm gonna stop so Jen, there. Yes, yeah. I have one question. Sure. How do I make it visible through my app to my clients? When you actually start an opportunity with them, first of all, when you, when you do your, your buyer consultation, you want to explain the app and go ahead and get them to start using it. And you can show them that the guides, everything that we're going to be doing is right there in your, in your app. Okay. But when you start an opportunity with them, um, like let's say you're in the, you, you, well, actually you should start an opportunity with them the minute you start working with them and they've signed the buyer agency or the listing agreement, what have you, okay? And then you, you, you'll be able to, I would have to go into opportunities to show you this, but once you actually start an opportunity, it then sends them that welcome, that introduction that you just saw a minute ago when I was on the buyer guide. It sends them that and they'll be able to go through all the steps on the app and then you'll be also, you'll be checking the steps along in the opportunity. It's, it's actually very intuitive. When you do it, you'll, you'll, see, it, you'll see it. And when you, you may have even noticed it before and not realized that it was tied to this, but it's tied to this, okay? Well, That's I have many of opportunities that I have created. So how do I find one here on my app? Well, your opportunities are not on your app. Remember, you are the consumer when you're looking at this. If you wanna see all of your, your opportunities, you need to go into your Kelly app. That's the turquoise one. 
Okay. By the way, you guys, your the the your Kelly app is basically your 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 first of all, it's your virtual assistant, and it's also your mobile back office. Every single thing that you need is right here in your Kelly app. As a matter of fact, if you open up that app right now, you'll notice on the bottom of the app, just like on the bottom of the consumer app, you have all these different tabs here on the bottom. See them? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you click on command, it takes you right to your whole database. It takes you all to your opportunities and everything. When you click on command, it shows you this screen. See? So in there you have your contacts and that's where you would actually go to see your opportunities. Jen? It has your task manager, all your, oh look, Meryl's got a cat. What's yes. your cat's name, Meryl? Nikki. Nikki, hi Nikki. Oh, he's looking at us. <laughs> yeah, so he's uh, practicing washing his hands often as he does. So, you know, good role <laughs> model over here. <laughs> Um, I, I'm sorry if I cut off the last answer. Um, right. I had two questions. I yep. was um, somehow my KW app mobile app was missing, so I had to set that up and download it all over again. So I missed finding um, where um, my consumers were in command. So please tell me you have recorded this session. You don't have to. I have recorded this session. Awesome. <laughs> but Meryl, if you just now downloaded your mobile app we, and you logged into this call late, we should probably talk on the phone because I, there are some important steps that you need to do. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I was following along, but I was trying to do the work at the same time. So um, thank you for that. And yep. the second question I have is, um, I have a lot of renters and that process can be torture, but I've got it down to a system. Is there a way to create a new timeline for renters? You just have buyers and sellers now. Yeah, there's, there's not another, they would have to create another um, guide for, for that and there isn't one. However, if you will make the suggestion, I'm sure hundreds of other people have made the suggestion, but if you'll make the suggestion on uh, the command help thing, I will also mention it because I'm on a lot of leadership calls. I'm also in a couple of labs um, with Austin. I will mention that as a suggestion. Okay, that would be fantastic. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Jen. Yeah. Uh, back to the question that you were answering. I went on Kelly and contacts and I put in the search field um, to look for a particular buyer that I know that I have an opportunity for him. And I and it, he's not coming up. He's not coming up as a contact. Yeah, you're in command and you're yeah. in contacts. Yeah. Um. So sometimes it's it's uh, it, it depends on how you've got his name. Sometimes, like for example, just try typing his first name, not his whole name. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, and it's not coming up. And I have an opportunity. He's an active buyer. Well, you could, you, you may also have some filters on and not realize that you have them on, but they, they're all there. It is a little, so sometimes like if you type in the word Michael and you, um, and you're, you're searching by first name, for example, you can, if you click on the, um, if you click on the, uh, whoops, click done. If you're in the contact field, the first box to the left, you can, um, I, you can, you know what you might want to do? Hold on a second. Let me try something. Um, okay, I know that's not right. You can, um, in the first, the first box, you can sort by first name, last name, group, sources, status, created, modified, or last contacted. Um, Let's try try searching by different different methods, Silva, and see if you see if you see him that way. I, you might also you might have also to the right of context is the word filters. You might have added some filters accidentally and not realized you had done it. But your whole entire like I, I'm looking right now in my contacts and all 2,500 of my contacts are here. So they're they're all here. You might just need to scroll scroll through until you until you see them. I don't know. 
Yes, as fun. a matter of fact, um, it worked. So I went and Jen had showed me that, Bernanke. Uh, yep. If you cannot pull by name, you go and enter the email address and then it pulls up. Ah, okay. So if like I said, just play, just, play with it, just play with it a little bit. Also, if you have a lot of contacts like I do, um, uh, and also notice too that you can open this, you can actually, you can open it in command. You can go into your, if you click on open in command on the bottom, you can actually go into the actual command database instead of just the mobile version. Which All right, so once I have him on the screen, control. how do I go to the opportunity from there? To well, so how about we talk about that offline, you and I? Okay, fine. Is there I anyone thought that it pertains to what you are teaching, how we connect the buyer's consultation. Well, what, once, once you're in the person's contact record, you would, you, would look, you would click on their opportunity, within their opportunity. Or you would even need to go to opportunity. You, you're probably going to need to open this up in the actual command in order to do it. Now, I just said a minute ago, if you open in command, you're gonna actually see, if you're, if you're just opening it in Kelly, you're just seeing the basics about the contact. You're not seeing every single thing. So you need to open it up in command. And you can certainly do it on your laptop. All right, any other questions for me on this topic? Was this helpful? Did everybody follow along and you're able to create your guides? Very helpful, Jen, yeah. thank you. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. I'm just curious, after you hit save, if you guys will go back to your, your app again and look at your guides and see, did it update? Hey, Jen. Yeah. Um, I never moved over to the sellers with you because I'm getting a big circle with a dash, you know, a line through it, a big red circle with a line through it, like it's not saving the buyer's guide. Have you, and you any did, idea? You, did, you, you didn't add an image. You, you must not have added an image. It won't save if you don't add the images. Yeah, it looks like I have all of them, but I'll keep looking at it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have an image on every one, but. Hmm. Jen, at what point in time do you do? I have images and it won't save for whatever reason. Hmm. Um, you perhaps you already saved it. Okay. And maybe it, if you've been saving it all along, and it's giving you an error, it's because you've already saved it. Now I'm just curious for those of you that have made some updates. I wonder if you will look at your phone and see did it did it update right away. You might need, to close, might need to close the app and go back in. Yeah, it hasn't updated on mine. It did or did not? It, it did not. Okay, so I think it probably is gonna take a little while for it to update any changes that you made. Um, but for those of you, like Stephen has taken this class with me before, Silva's taken this class with me before, and they can all attest to the fact that it does work. It didn't update on mine either. All right, so obviously it's gonna take a little while for it to update. I don't know what the timeline of that is, but it, it will update. So as long as you've got it there in your command, you know it will show up on your phone. It looks like I lost my work, unfortunately. Ah, uh, yeah, tr tr sorry, I, that happened to me too. You gotta, you gotta hit save after every single time, just go to the top. I, I just made an amazing discovery. What's that? If you're in if you're in the app and you click on one of the one of the uh, steps, yep. Watch what happens. You get a further deep dive into the uh, description. Yeah. Not only that, but it also says remember because it thinks you're the consumer, so it's going to say previous step, mark step as completed, or what's the next step. That is so cool. Yep. And how do you get there? This is what I'm trying to figure out. Silva, go into the app. Remember, yes. you're, 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 your buyer is seeing this now. And click, for, click on one of the steps of, in the app. Okay? I'm in, the, I'm in the app, okay? Look. Yes. No, go to the Where guides. Go? Well, go to the guides on the bottom. Thank you, Jen. Take care. You're welcome. Bye, Dee. Bye. All right, so as Steven said, so you're in, you're in the guide. I got it, I got it, thank you. Thank Click you. on one of the steps. 
And then you'll yes. see, yeah, and see how at the bottom it allows them to mark that step as completed or see the previous step or go to the next step. And there's a ton of information there, see? Isn't that cool? Thank you. It shows your buyer what's coming next or your seller what's coming next. Then All I, right? I have a question. Yes. So how, when do you actually share, oh, here. When do you actually share your app with the client? And how do you go about doing that? I share it with them the minute I meet them. And I, or even if I haven't started working with you, I mean, if I'm at an open house, I say, oh, I see from your, your sign-in sheet that you're looking at your finding homes through Zillow. Did you know that Zillow lags behind by as much as four weeks? And then they go, no, I didn't know that. Well, guess what? I have the most amazing mobile app and um, it's all, you know, it, it's a direct connection to my actual MLS database. Here, let me show it to you. And then I open it in front of them, right? And I say, the other, the coolest thing about this is it's GPS activated. So it's looking at homes right where we are right now. No other app has that. And then so I is start scrolling through, pardon? It's true that Zillow is really four weeks behind? It, it, it can, it's usually not four weeks behind, but it can be at least two to three weeks behind. Especially if you have a, Zillow does not recognize the status of show or, uh, well, it does recognize pending now, but for our status, it doesn't recognize show. So if you have a prop, if you're shopping in a competitive price point and you have a property that your clients like, and it's already got an accepted offer, it'll still show as available on Zillow. And how many of us have gotten that call? Hey, Jody, can, can you show me this house? You're like, yeah, that house isn't available. Yes, it is. It says it, it is on Zillow. Anyone got that? Nine million yes. times? Yeah, nine million times. Okay. So, the, so I shared the app with them from the very beginning. So do you, ever, do you ever think about sending the app like to you, out to your database? Oh, yes, you guys. There's so many cool things. There's a whole smart plan for sending that out. Already branded to you. You can even earlier today in the coaching class, we, we created a, um, a landing page with your, uh, uh, with your mobile app on it sharing your mobile app, but there's a whole smart plan. If you're in command and you look and you click on smart plans, there's a whole smart plan for sharing your mobile app directly Great. to your entire database. And if you're not doing that, you should be. You guys, this, this thing is going to be amazing because you and, and everything that the company has built to help you share it encourages people to share it which means people, you know, I have people actually in Michigan looking at my app. I don't even know who the hell these people are. I don't know how they got it, but they're in Michigan looking at my stuff. So it's, oh, you can use it all over the place? Or yeah. It's not just Connecticut? No. You get in your car and you go to New Jersey today and you open up your app, you're going to see what's for sale in New Jersey. Because well, we I own our... Because we so I just own want to share. Our MLS. We own our own data. That's why. Right. So because it is GPS based, it knows where you are. So one time we were away and we were in a really fancy neighborhood and we were just curious. We were out for a walk and we were just curious as to how much the houses sold were selling for. So we, I pulled up the app and it just told me, oh, this is on the intercoastal waterway and it's, it's $2,300,000. So it's really cool. And you can pull up all the pictures of the insides of the homes. Pretty cool. Yeah. So if you're doing a buyer consultation or a listing presentation, my suggestion would be that you, you know, part of your process and part of your steps is to, you know, help them download the app right then and there. And now you can see why this is so important to them. It also allows you to communicate with them and they can communicate with each other. So if it's a couple, let's say the wife saves the house, all she has to do is put it in their collaborate in their collaborations and then they'll both see what each other is sharing. Instead of having to email the link and the blah, oh, you don't do any of that crap. They've thought of everything. This is your most important tool. Okay, any other questions? No? All right. Was this helpful to everybody? Very. Very. Great class. It was great. I'm so glad. All right. Well, and we got through it. Look at that. A tech class and no one died. <laughs> <laughs> this was excellent, Jen. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you we, just... we survived. We got through it. And you now have a, 
you now have an amazing um, guide to your apps. Um, you know, just make sure you go in and finish everything. And uh, I wish you all a fantastic day. Be well. Thank you so much. To you as well. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. So, Jen, one quick question. <laughs> These updates are going to update on the, on the app? Update. I don't know how quickly, but they're going to update. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.